Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video is going to consider the concept of simple interest and more importantly a small derivation of the simple interest formula. Uh, but before we get started, let's consider, I suppose, a small example. Okay, uh, Let's consider an example of where we have a particular, we have a timeline. Uh, time today is is defined to be zero uh, one means one year has elapsed two represents two years has elapsed and three represents three years has elapsed and so on and so forth let's call this axis the t-axis for time okay uh, and let's just uh, assume that we have a bank account or savings account and that we place an amount of money in a savings account uh, at time zero in other words we place an amount of money in a savings account today and let's say for this particular example that we place 100 euros in a savings account today okay let's assume that this savings account has a fixed interest rate let's assume that interest is calculated uh, we'll use the symbol I and let's assume for this example that the interest rate is 10% okay uh, and let's see what happens to this 100 euros over time uh, as interest is applied to the account okay so at time zero or today we've placed 100 euros in the account uh, we wouldn't expect to receive any reward at time zero today for placing that 100 euros in the account. Uh, so the amount in the account is 100 euros today. Let's assume that one year has elapsed. Uh, so if one year has elapsed, what we'd expect to have in the account is what we had in the previous year, which is 100 euros, plus a reward uh, for keeping that 100 euros in the account for one year. And if interest is running at 10%, we'd expect to have 10% of 100 euros. Well, 10% of 100 euros is 10 euros. So after one year, what we should have in the account is 110 euros. Okay. Now let's assume that two years has elapsed. If two years has elapsed, what we'd expect to have in the account is what we had in the previous year, uh, which is 110 euros. Uh, plus a reward for leaving that in the account for the extra year. But the thing about simple interest and what differentiates simple interest from compound interest is that the reward or the interest payment is always based off our principal that we've placed in the account at time zero. So the reward after two years has elapsed will be 10% of our principal investment which is 10% of 100 which is 10 euros. So after two years has elapsed, what we'd have is what we had previously plus 10 euros, which gives us 120 euros. And continuing in this fashion, uh, after three years has elapsed, what we'd expect to have in the account is what we had in the previous year, which is 120 euros, uh, plus a reward. Once again, the reward or the interest uh, that will accumulate uh, is I percent or 10% of our principal value which is 10% of 100 which is 10 euros so at the end of three years or after three years has elapsed we would have 140 euros in the account and that's how simple interest works after a certain time period the interest that's added on at the end of each time period is a percentage of the principal investment so let's say that this is our principal our principal investment or our principal value and let's call that PV so we end up with I percent of PV or I percent in this case of 100 euros okay so let's try to uh, I suppose generalize a formula uh, that we can use uh, for calculating uh, the future value the future value of an account if interest is applied based on a simple interest uh, based on a simple interest uh, technique uh, or, or method. So let's do another table. Let's do a small table that looks something like this. Okay, uh, And let's say down the first column we have T to represent time or to represent how many years have elapsed. Uh, zero meaning today. One meaning one year has elapsed. Two meaning two years has elapsed. Three meaning three years has elapsed. And so on 
and so forth. Okay. And let's try to generalize this particular pattern uh, by using uh, variables to represent each of our amounts. Okay, so at time zero, let's say, in this example, we put 100 euros in the account, but let's say we put a general amount of PV in the account. Okay, so at time zero, we have PV uh, deposited in our savings account. Okay, would we expect any interest payment? No, we wouldn't because the amount that we've invested, PV, uh, hasn't been in the account for any moment of time or any amount of time, so we wouldn't expect to receive a reward. Okay, now let's see, after one year has elapsed, what we should have in the account is what we had in the previous year, which is PV, plus a reward for leaving that PV in the account for one year. Okay, and the reward should be I percent of our principal investment, so it should be I times PV, okay? So after one year has elapsed, what we should have in the account is our principal investment or our principal value plus I percent of our principal value. And with a little bit of algebra, uh, we can simplify this. These two terms have something in common. They have a PV in common, so let's take the PV out, okay? And let's see what's left behind. Well, this is 1 PV, so when I take PV out, I'm left with 1. And here we have uh, plus I PV. When I take PV out, what I'm left with is I'm left with plus I. So this simplifies to PV times 1 plus I. Now, let's move on to the second year, or when two years have elapsed. What we should have in the account is what we had in the previous year, which is PV times 1 plus I. And what we, should, what we should gain or what we should receive for leaving that amount in the account is we should receive an interest payment based on our principal value. And the interest payment should be I percent of our principal value. So it should be I PV. And once again, with a small bit of algebra, you can see with these two terms here, this term and this term, what's common is a PV. So let's take the PV out. So we have PV. What's left behind here when we take PV out is 1 plus I. And what's left behind here when we take PV out is, is I. So this simplifies to PV times 1 plus 2I. Okay, and continuing in this particular fashion, uh, after three years has elapsed, we'd expect to have in the account what we had in the previous year, which is PV times 1 plus 2I, plus an interest payment, and the interest payment from a simple interest perspective is I percent of our principal value. So we should have I PV. And once again, with a small bit of algebra, we can see that with this term here, uh, what we have in common with this term and this term is a PV. So let's take the PV out. What's left behind here when we take PV out is 1 plus 2i. And what's left behind here when we take PV out is plus i. So this simplifies to be PV times 1 plus 3i. And we can continue in this particular fashion. But maybe we'll just stop here and see can we generalize. So what we can see is at the end of a certain number of years, for example, after three years has elapsed, what we have in the account is PV times 1 plus 3i. After two years has elapsed, what we have in the account is PV times 1 plus 2i. And after one year has elapsed, what we have in the account is PV times, well, it's 1 plus i, which is the same as 1 plus 1i. One okay? Uh, so what we hopefully can see is that we have a general formula that after t years, what we should have in the account is PV times 1 plus, well, the coefficient of the i is always the same as the year that we're in, okay? Or how many years has elapsed. Uh, after 3 years has elapsed, the coefficient of the i is 3. After 2 years has elapsed, the coefficient of the i is 2. After 1 year has elapsed, the coefficient of the i is 1. I suppose in this case, which is an unusual case, this would actually be the same as PV times 1 plus 0i, okay, to give us PV. So after t years, what we'd expect to have in the account is PV times 1 plus t.
i, where t represents the number of years, i represents the interest rate, and PV represents the principal value. So this allows us to, I suppose, generate a general formula for the calculation of the future value of an account where interest is applied based on a simple interest uh, method. Okay? So this gives us that the future value, FV, is equal to PV times 1 plus TI, where, let's say, FV represents the future value, the future value, PV represents the principal value, the principal value, and I represents the interest rate, or the interest rate. It's important that that's converted into a decimal, and T represents the number of years that has elapsed. Okay, so this gives us our general formula for calculating uh, the future value of an account if interest is applied based on a simple interest method. Okay. Uh, guys, I hope that was helpful. The next video will look at an application of this particular formula in a number of cases, uh, in particular where we know the principal value, we know the interest rate, we know how long the principal has been left in the account, and the question is for us to calculate the future value. And also we'll have a look at a, a, another way of calculating this is where you're given the future value, you're given the principal value, you know how long it's been left in the account and we have to calculate what the interest rate was to accumulate such a future value. So we'll have a look at different transpositions of this particular formula uh, in the next video. Okay guys, uh, my name was Jonathan Lambert uh, with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland and I hope this video was helpful.